Rob Young is the founder of Prodigies, a kid's music education membership. He's also a marketing pro who's grown his membership to reach over 7,000 families. In this conversation, Rob shares his insights into the powerful marketing and community building strategies that helped him grow the Prodigies audience to where it is today. Check it out. Rob, thanks so much for joining us. I'd love to know a little bit more about how did you get from the idea of prodigies to where we are today? Yeah, that's a great question. So back in about 2014, I was teaching lots of music lessons. I'm sure that a lot of the teachers and creators at Screen are taking what they did in, real, in the real world and kind of turning it digital. So this is sort of a typical story in that sense. Um, I was teaching a lot of these colorful music lessons, doing a lot with these boom whackers and the desk bells. And essentially, I was one teacher with 20 or 30 kids moving around the room, trying to coordinate, trying to, hey, you guys play the red bell, ready, set, go, okay. And it was just a lot of like, just conducting and managing and little kids. So it was like, okay, what can we, how can we make this a little bit easier for me? Um, so it kind of started out as slides with just like big colored circles. And I'd point the kids through the slides, pretty basic, pretty classic music educator kind of stuff. Uh, and then it was like, okay, can we make the circles move? Can we get it to feel a little bit more like a Tar Hero? And then it was like, well, who's going to teach these kids who are streaming this stuff on YouTube or streaming this from our website? So then we kind of started messing with the green screen and getting me into more of the videos where the music's falling down or scrolling this way. Uh, and that kind of was a bit of a hit. So we just kind of kept running with that. Um, we originally developed about 20 videos that took kids – from the very basics of like just one note up to the, the full eight notes of the C major scale. And we thought that that was our course. And we thought we'd be like selling that course for 297 or whatever it was for like the next 20, 30 years. Uh, but people, long story short, wanted a lot more videos. So about 900 videos later, we're getting close to a thousand videos. At one point, I think it was May of 2017, we wanted to get an app and we started working with another provider and essentially it was just insanely expensive and it i don't want to say it sank our business but all of a sudden anything we were making was going right back into this other company providing the same service that you guys provide for us now so we made a switch about two years after that to you screen um which has been a lot more fun a lot more affordable a lot more customizable too which is important for us so there's sort of these three avenues that we operate in. It's sort of like homeschool families and littles. It's sort of like teachers who work on their, out of their own pocket. And then there's sort of the bigger school districts. So that's kind of like our three-pronged approach. Um, and these days I do, I mean, I still animate almost all the videos myself. I do have two or three teammates that help me with the music and the animations. I do most of them here in the studio. The green screen's like up on the wall. This is kind of our quick shoot a video without the green screen setup because my hair is a little wild uh which works for the videos but it's a nightmare on the green screen um so that's kind of how we've gotten here you mentioned kind of three different segments that you're, you're trying to reach do you approach those audiences in different ways and how do you go about that yeah so the the way we kind of go about that is and this is maybe getting into some of our marketing and some of our kind of promotion strategies but we essentially run a lot of 10-day promotions throughout the year um, and we try to target those specifically to different audiences. So this is maybe not true for all you screen creators, but we also have an e-commerce shop. So between the three plans and maybe a dozen SKUs and some books and things like that, we kind of always have a sort of unique or slightly different promo that's happening. Um, and we try to gear that toward a specific audience. So for instance, March is music in our schools month and February is a really big month for, music education conferences. So this March, we're all about the schools and everything we're promoting is like bulk cases of instruments or it's our school plans or it's our teacher membership. Um, so for almost the whole month of March, we know that we're kind of the keywords on the website, the copy, the emails, it's all kind of based around like being a teacher, being an educator, being a district, being a, a choir director or, or a district buyer or things like that. So we kind of split it up that way. YouTube is really big for the sort of the $10 a month streaming parents, preschoolers, moms who are just looking for a way to essentially occupy their kids with something educational. That's where we get a lot of our $10 a month subscribers. And then the conferences and the email list is where we pitch most of our, really the email list is where we pitch most of our bigger bundles. Curious about the free training that you offer in exchange for email addresses. 
How has that worked out for you? Yeah, that's been one of our longest running funnels and that does work really well. It's it's kind of waned with time and I think it needs a bit of a revamp. It's been the same sort of training since 2018. It's our top 10 secrets of teaching kids music. It really is kind of like the ultimate thing that we do. It's all of our best concepts in one place. It breaks down why we do what we do. Um, and it's also my wife and I just talking right at the camera with a lot of animations and a lot of slides and things. So it's very engaging and it feels like, oh, you actually know these two people by the end of it. Um, so, so that works really well for, for people who just come to the website cold and they want something that's like actually a, a value, but the value in that free training is definitely there. And we hear about it from people all the time at, at conferences, even people will walk up, Oh, I love the free training. And I'm like, w w which one? I'm like, I'm assuming I know what you're talking about, but also there's a couple of them. Um, and then the other thing that I've found more and more, maybe people have gotten wise to the automated webinar game a little bit just as far as like everybody online more because post COVID and things like that. So when we do them live, when we do almost the same training or some version of it live, that almost always works way better. Um, and we usually, we usually sparse that up with like a giveaway in the middle or even two giveaways. Um, and people like to know that it's really me behind the camera and it's like, it could get messed up that they, they enjoy that. They, they bring their kids on and all the kids are typing and they're like, say, say hi to this person. I'm like, Oh, like and we do like shout out to the end and stuff like that. So the value of that training is, is, is high for our business. And anytime we take it off the site, we're like, why did we do that? Um, but, but redoing it in person seems to be maybe the better move these days. Got it. And so so are you saying leveraging like live, going live as a lead generator is what's been working better these days? For sales at the end of a promotion, definitely. So usually if like right before the end of Black Friday, we'll do something like 10 ways to engage your kids in music this holiday season or which, uh, t 10 tips for winter enrollment. And that was like our January thing. And it's almost more of just a community event because a lot of the people that are there have either seen the training, they know what we're about. Half of them are already paying members. They just kind of want to show up and say hi. But for anybody else who's considering enrolling, they see this in real time. All these kids who love Mr. Rob, all these parents who are praising the program, all these teachers who have a million questions and we're like, you know, yes, we are adding more of this. And I know we need to get more of that. Like, so, so it definitely helps um, in that sense. And how did you decide that you wanted to offer a lifetime membership? Because that's, that's not something that I run across often with our customers. Yeah, so somebody else decided it for me uh, is, is the short answer. But essentially, we work with a lot of folks in other countries, folks in more rural areas. And we started doing this in 2014 or 2013, 14, 15, give or take. And essentially, I got some emails um that were like hey my internet sucks so what i'm doing right now is i'm going to a cafe 30 minutes away and i'm streaming your videos and i'm screen grabbing them and i'm taking them home i just wanted to tell you that i'm doing this because i feel bad this is like somebody that was one of our first customers right like our, our first 20 customers like somebody reaches out and they're doing this to to adjust the program for their kid they were like but I, but i would pay you for they like, like, I would pay you for three or four years worth of the program just to have the, the MP4 downloads. So that's how it kind of started. It was like, if you are become a lifetime member, we'll give you the videos and you can do with them what you need to. This was great for people in rural areas. This is great for teachers. Even this is like before Google Classroom and things like that. Um, and obviously there are some, there are some risks with that right now. Your videos are out there. Your MP4s are out there, but at the same time, the internet is a giant copy and paste machine. If somebody really wanted to, they could rip all the videos. So it was better just to kind of like give them those people that and charge them for it. Um, and then also with, we just got really into Facebook ads and we play that game a lot. Some days really well, some days not so well, but the having a higher ticket item there is really helpful. And if you, if you just kind of go around the web and look at other online courses, you run into a lot of like, whether it's Udemy or Teachable, where there's not this sort of monthly or yearly commitment. It's like you bought the course and you're, you know, you can access it. They don't, they often don't say lifetime. That's kind of, um, but, but, but essentially you have it for as long as they are in operation. So we started doing it that way. We've adjusted the lifetime membership over the years so that it's gotten more expensive and it doesn't have as many of the 
physical downloads now that we have you screen and the app and more people are online it's not as necessary to have all those mp4s floating around um and then the other thing about the word lifetime that's kind of nice is it implies and it and it, and it sort of uh exemplifies that we will we have content for your one-year-old and we will still have content when they are 10 and 11 and 12 you know, maybe they'll take a break because they get sick of music clubs with Mr. Rob after three years, but then they come back and they're at a new level. So it is this sort of lifelong journey, at least for, you know, the early childhood por portion of it. And then we've got about 32 or 3,300 lifetime members, maybe maybe more like 37, uh, depending on how you kind of split that. Um, but they, that, that was a sort of essential for us just as far as seed money and getting off the ground, bootstrapping it um, and being able to run more aggressive ad campaigns, essentially. It was like the the... The continued continued reason and then during covid we went from a team of like three people to a team of like 15 people and it kind of felt like essential to just keep those lifetimes coming in to keep payroll up um but we've we've slimmed down a bit since then so we're trying to get back to focusing on the recurring um which you know the recurring is nice because people get there and they're like oh 10 bucks a month that's a no-brainer as opposed to like 700 dollars. like are you crazy and it's like well there's a lot in here like and also like you might be the wrong person if you don't totally see the value that's fine like go to youtube go to the free trial so i know you've you got a good um social presence on multiple platforms as well it, have you found that you know ads aside have you found that one of those platforms is um more successful than others in driving the kind of traffic that you want so for organic traffic with with no ads involved i really have not found a great social platform outside of youtube uh, if you consider that a social platform that has always done well even that obviously does better when we're paying to have our videos show up a bit more but just being regular there is almost always a win for us and i kind of fell off of that for a bit we're kind of back into it now um We've been having some success with our podcast that we launched this year. That's kind of a new realm for us. It's a show for kids. So that's really fun. And we like highlight prodigies of the week and we do things like that. So that's been really fun and, and kind of community building. So one thing we've been very careful of the last year after making some of these mistakes a bit was like staying away from the shiny objects and the new, the new platforms. And obviously there's merit. If you can crush it on TikTok, like more power to you. But what we found there was a lot of students commenting on our videos and and watching the videos and getting good value out of it which is great but these are kids who aren't going to pull out their wallets and like okay I, I can't i can only put so much time into that but also like you know the just that in-person connection is something that maybe we didn't value enough and the more i go out to my daughter's school or even to the playground i'm playing my ukulele you know kids start dancing oh like you got a car or something like, yeah here's our website and like, oh you have a whole program and they those people check it out so that's that's been more of a, a newer phenomenon with having kids of our own but that, that's maybe one of our better organic channels, I guess. Got it. Well, Rob, thank you so much for all these insights and all this perspective. It's been incredibly helpful, incredibly enlightening. And I know that people will get a lot of value out of it. Nice. Um, it where can people find you online? Yeah, totally. So we are at prodigies.com, which is super exciting. Um, it took us a long time to get that domain. And I had to talk them down to like a very small fraction of the price they wanted. And it took a long time, but we're very excited to find us at prodigies.com. We're on YouTube as Prodigies Music. And if you search Prodigies Music on Instagram or Facebook, you'll find us there too. But the website's really where it's at. The free training's there, free trials there, free sheet music downloads. It's all at prodigies.com. And yeah, that's definitely the, the spot to go.